my wife always is laughs at me because I give myself self fives. <laughs> it's good to recognize when you do something that you know you're proud of. It's good. It's good to do. Okay. So proportional controller design is something that uh, I introduced already, so I don't need to go into a lot of detail. But uh, it's the task of choosing the gain k with which the closed loop system performs in a desirable manner. Okay, so once again, all we can do is just choose the gain, but we just want it to behave in a certain way that we like. All three performance classes, stability, transient response, and steady state error can be affected by changes in the gain. However, with a gain controller, there is typically no way to satisfy strict requirements in all categories. Okay. So we can't be like, okay, I want it to be stable. I want it to have this specific transient response with this percent overshoot, this rise time, etc. And I want zero steady state error. Um, you might be able to satisfy two of those, but probably not all three of them. Um, you might get lucky, but it's not likely that you can, which is why we have these other types of controllers, not just, not just game control. Uh, Instead, typically, stability can be satisfied and transient response characteristics can be partially satisfied. Um, varying the gain simply moves the closed loop holes along the root locus, right? However, often the root locus does not pass through the closed loop pole location required for ideal transient response performance. So if you want the damp, if you want the percent overshoot to be a certain number, and say you can use a second order approximation, you know that the closed loop holes have to lie on this ray that goes out from the, the origin. But maybe your root locus doesn't go through that ray ever. So if it doesn't go through that ray, there's no varying of the gain that's gonna get you to that transient response performance. You can try to get as close as you can, but that's, that's all you can do. Um, Yeah. Uh, later, we will learn how to design controllers that do not have this limitation. Virtually always, we assume it is a requirement for the closed loop system to be stable. Therefore, we can immediately restrict our task to selecting from those values of gain k for which the system is stable. So we're we're not gonna we're not gonna choose gains that give us unstable performance. So that's easy enough. Uh, now let's recall from chapter three the relationships between the location of closed loop poles and the corresponding transient response performance. The parameters uh, rise time, peak time, settling time, and percent overshoot can all be related to the dominant closed loop pole locations. And we did that back in chapter three. Criteria will be given in terms of these transient response performance parameters and the design task will be to choose the best gain such that these requirements are met. So, easy enough. For most problems, we will make the first or second order assumption for high order systems and uh, for first and second order systems with zeros, which we talked about the second order uh, approximation or second order assumption and first order assumption. Uh, recall that even if uh, this is an inaccurate assumption, it gives us a starting point for design. We will always simulate to evaluate the actual performance criteria of a given design. So we're not going to say, oh, we're going to design it for a rise time of two seconds, base it on the second order approximation, and then not simulate it. Um, we got to simulate it to see if we actually succeeded at that. Um, so the following procedure is one way to go about designing a proportional controller, but let us keep in mind the adage that plans are useless, but planning is essential. Um, actually, the, I forget who said it, but they, they use different words. I like this phrasing better. So I'm quoting, but like, but like not exactly. Paraphrasing, because I like this way better. Here is the procedure. Step one, using the second or, or first order uh, uh, approximation or assumption, Estimate the ideal location of the closed loop poles for the desired transient response criteria. So the problem gives you, like, you need a, a settling time of 
three seconds. So you need to decide where your closed loop poles need to be. So maybe they need to be right there. Um, your dominant closed loop poles need to be in order to, uh, based on the second order approximation, in order to make those transient response characteristics um, actually be the case. So that's the first step. Then construct a root locus plot and select the location on the root locus that is closest to the desired closed loop pole location. So say our root locus came or over here and then it went like that. Well, it doesn't go through the point that we really want, but we'll choose like this point or something, or maybe this point that's close to where we want to be. Um, and we'll find out what, what gain is associated with that. Okay, we're going to get as close as we can and see, if it, see how that goes. Then solve for the closed loop transfer function with this gain. So use the gain, find the closed loop transfer function. And finally, simulate the response for a unit step command. Okay. Uh, when you simulate it, you can evaluate the performance criteria and iterate if necessary. So that's the procedure. It's pretty straightforward. It's, there's not a lot to it. Um, they'll get more complicated as we go. More advanced controllers require a little bit more work. But it's actually often something like this. Um, and remember, this is just, you know, this is a design process, so you can start off, go one, two, three, four, and you might need to go back to two, you might need to go back to one. So that's how this works. So here's an example, and I think I succeeded in giving you guys the entire example um, in your notes, which I'm not going to walk through the, uh, the notes version so much. I'm gonna, we're going to do it in MATLAB, um, and we're going to see the steps as we go through it. And this, is, this description in your notes is essentially uh, a way for you to remember how we did it. So I'm trying out this new way of doing these examples because they're in MATLAB and I could give you the notebook and I think I do, well, I, I should send you the notebook, but it's, it's uh, kind of opaque when you look back at the notebook. How did we do this again? So hopefully this is like a bread, trail of breadcrumbs that could lead you back. So uh, the problem is, so for a plant with this transfer function, uh, design a, uh, so if you have a plant with this transfer function, that means that like your system has this transfer function. You want to put some feedback control on the system. Um, so for instance, maybe this is the transfer function for our thermal system. Um, it's not, but maybe it is. Uh, and, and we want to put some feedback control on it so we can control like what the temperature is. Um, okay. Design a unity feedback gain controller such that the system has a 20% overshoot and minimal settling time. Okay? So that's our performance requirement is 20% overshoot and minimal settling time. So uh, let's pop over to MATLAB to do this. So, first step, cleared my workspace, so there's no, no variables to find. The next step is to define the system. So that's easy enough. I just use ZPK, um, looking, at the, looking at the transfer function, we have a, pole, uh, a, a zero at negative 13, a zero at negative 15. So those are the two zeros. There was a pole at positive 2 and a pole at negative 2. So that means our open loop system is what? If you have a pole at positive 2 in an open loop system, what does that mean in terms of stability? It's unstable, right? So open loop unstable, not surprising that we want to have a feedback controller on it to make the system behave better. So we at least want it to be stable, but we also want these performance criteria. And then it doesn't have any, any uh, little k gain term out here. So the first step 
is to determine the desired closed loop pole location. Um, that's in our design procedure, that's what we said, that's our first step. Now, our two criteria are settling time, um, minimal settling time, and percent overshoot, which is specific percent overshoot. And percent overshoot, we need to recall that for a specific percent overshoot, we are um, we are looking for closed loop poles that lie on a specific ray coming out from the origin. Okay, so the angle of that ray from the origin is depends on the damping ratio, depends on the percent overshoot. They're just one to one there. So we aren't necessarily looking for a specific uh, uh, closed loop pole location. We're looking for a, a closed loop pole that lies somewhere on this ray for the percent overshoot requirement. Now, the settling time requirement, do you guys remember how the settling time is related to location in the, close, in the, in the complex plane? Further left, the exponential has a larger negative value, right? Which means that it, it collapses faster, it decays faster, and so the settling time is going to be smaller. So as you move to the left, so settling time decreasing, right? And this ray is associated with a specific percent overshoot. So ideally, we're on this ray as far left as we can be. This is your left. Uh, right? That's, who, that's where we want to be. Now, there's not a specific pole location, but we know that that's, that's where we want to be. And we also know that when we draw a root locus, then we have to get realistic about it. Like, where can we actually be, right? So let's, let's, uh, let's do that next step then. Um, let's do a figure. I have presciently chosen a bunch of specific gains uh, for this, but, But uh, you could just use our locus the first time and then, um, and then see it. So we see that, you know, not surprisingly, these two open loop poles end up at these open loop zeros. And it becomes stable as you increase the gain. Now, if we go around here, we can see that. So first off, let's talk about. Now, these rays are associated with closed loop poles being at locations, and et cetera. This is all based on the second order assumption, right? All based on the second order assumption. And if uh, the second order system, this is second order, but it has two zeros in it, so it's just an approximation. So we'll see how well it is, how, how well it approximates things. So percent overshoot shows up here based on the second order approximation. Um, in this in this little cursor, so we can go between these two points, and we see, oh look, um, the percent overshoot is eighteen point eight there. If we put the closed loop poles there, and if we go up one, twenty two point uh, uh, seven is the percent overshoot there. So between those two gains um, is twenty percent overshoot. So that happens there, but this ray extends out to the other side of the circle, right? So let's look there. And we also see that we get, you know, between these two, you get 20% overshoot as well. Now, which one should we go for? Because we could choose either one. Uh, they're both 20% overshoot, but our other criterion is that has a, a lower settling time, right? Shorter settling time. And so a shorter settling time corresponds to further left 
right? So we want to take this one because it's further left. And the gain associated with that is 0 0.234. Just reading off of there. So we just define our gain for 20% overshoot um, is 0 0.234. Um, and that's, that's that. So we're going to evaluate that. Our next step is to solve for the closed loop transfer function. Now, you could just do uh, g over 1 plus kg. That would be the closed loop transfer function for this. Also, MATLAB has this nice command that allows you to put the forward path transfer function here and then the feedback path transfer function in the second slot of this feedback function, and it does that for you. <coughs> Marginal uh, uh, value, because it does allow you also to just do, you can just do g over 1 plus k times g. And that gives you this. If I am to look at the one that's defined using the feedback command, it's identical. Well, it doesn't have these. There's a cancellation here that it doesn't take into account. Um, but it's virtually identical. So. We have a, uh, so this is the feedback command, that's what, it, that's what it gives us. Now, step four is to simulate and to plot. So I'm going to evaluate this, uh, so we use the step command to do the simulation. Now you can use LSIM, is the more general way to do simulation. Uh, but step gives you the step response, and when we evaluate our performance criteria, it's always based on the unit step response, right? So we might as well just do that. Um, just use the step command. So you hand it the system, the closed loop system, and you hand it the uh, final time, and it will give you back the output and a time array. Um, there are different ways you can do this. You can give it the time array that you want out also. These are all valid. Step info, you give it the step response, and you, uh, you can either give it the endpoint or you don't have to. It's implicit. I had it in there, but you don't have to, either one. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to actually tell us what the, what the uh, step response characteristics actually are. So here's the step response. I'll look at the let's look at the graph first. Step response. Our command is, st is going from 0 to 1, suddenly. Uh, notice, first of all, the thing that's most striking is that there's overshoot, and it doesn't come back to the steady state value of 1. So there's going to be a steady state error in this problem. We can't do much about that with proportional control. We'll learn about how to mitigate that later. Um, but. So we've got you know a settling time looks like of you know about one and a half two seconds something like that in there. Um, we've got a uh, percent overshoot. We got to base it on this final value, but it definitely looks like it's more than uh, twenty percent. And in fact, it is. If you look at the the step info, it tells us that the percent overshoot is twenty four point five which is 5% or sorry 4.5% uh, more than what we were going for which is because we were using the second order approximation and it wasn't totally valid so we we're you know uh, it also gives things like rise time uh, settling time peak time like all the stuff that we want to know and so if you if you manually are to go through and evaluate these things, that's fine. But it is nice to be able to use MATLAB to. All it's doing is it's saying, oh, what is the highest value in this array, and what is the last value in this array? That's how it computes the percent overshoot. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, 
And so we, we are too much with our percent overshoot. So let's try a higher gain. So if we try a higher gain, we're going to be moving on the root locus. We're going to be moving this way, which should be towards, if you look at the, uh, the damping direction we're going, our percent overshoot should be going down based on the second order approximation. So we'll move leftward by just increasing the gain to like 0.35, which you know, was a pretty significant one, but you can iterate on this. Just sit here and just plug in something that's bigger than your initial value and go through the same steps, new closed loop transfer function, new step response, and plot that. And so what I did here is I divided by the steady state value so that we could see the percent overshoot more explicitly. Um, there's still a steady state error in this, but I just divided by the steady state. I normalized everything by the steady state value, so it comes to 1. And we see that we get pretty much right at 20%, 19.7 according to step info, percent overshoot. So we have achieved our, our goal, right? We're pretty much right at 20% overshoot, and we have minimal settling time. That's as good as we can do with this, with this system and, and uh, with a gain control only. Okay? All right. I've kept you guys late, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you.